In this guide, we are focusing on the essential networking basics that every developer should know. We'll break down the Internet Protocol Suite layer by layer, from application layer where DNS and ports live, down to the physical hardware that makes up the backbone of our Internet. First, let's talk about networking basics. When we talk about networking basics, we are essentially discussing how computers communicate with each other. At the heart of this communication is the IP address, a unique identifier for each device on a network. IPv4 addresses are 32-bit, which allows for approximately 4 billion unique addresses. However, with the increasing number of devices, we are moving to IPv6, which uses 128-bit addresses, significantly increasing the number of available unique addresses. When two computers communicate over a network, they send and receive packets of data. And each packet contains an IP header, which contains essential information like the sender's and receiver's IP addresses, ensuring that the data reaches the correct destination. This process is governed by the Internet Protocol, which is a set of rules that defines how data is sent and received. Besides the IP layer, we also have the application layer, where data specific to the application protocol is stored. The data in these packets is formatted according to specific application protocol data, like HTTP for web browsing, so that the data is interpreted correctly by the receiving device. Once we understand the basics of IP addressing and data packets, we can dive into transport layer, where TCP and UDP come into play. TCP operates at the transport layer and ensures reliable communication. It's like a delivery guy who makes sure that your package not only arrives, but also checks that nothing is missing. So each data packet also includes a TCP header, which is carrying essential information like port numbers and control flags necessary for managing the connection and data flow. TCP is known for its reliability, it ensures the complete and correct delivery of data packets. It accomplishes this through features like sequence numbers, which keep track of the order of packets, and the process known as the freeway handshake, which establishes a stable connection between two devices. In contrast, UDP is faster but less reliable than TCP. It doesn't establish a connection before sending data and doesn't guarantee the delivery or order of the packets. But this makes UDP preferable for time-sensitive communications like video calls or live streaming where speed is crucial and some data loss is acceptable. To tie all these concepts together, let's talk about DNS, domain name system. DNS acts like the Internet's phone book, translating human-friendly domain names into IP addresses. When you enter a URL in your browser, the browser sends a DNS query to find the corresponding IP address, allowing it to establish a connection to the server and retrieve the web page. The functioning of DNS is overseen by ICANN, which coordinates the global IP address space and domain name system. And domain name registrars like Namecheap or GoDaddy are accredited by ICANN to sell domain names to the public. DNS uses different types of records, like A records, which map the domain to its corresponding IP address, ensuring that your request reaches to the correct server or 4A records, which map a domain name to an IPv6 address. And finally, let's talk about the networking infrastructure, which supports all this communication. Devices on a network have either public or private IP addresses. Public IP addresses are unique across the Internet, while private IP addresses are unique within a local network. An IP address can be static, permanently assigned to a device, or dynamic, changing over time. Dynamic IP addresses are commonly used for residential internet connections. And devices connected in a local area network can communicate with each other directly. And to protect these networks, we are using firewalls, which are monitoring and controlling incoming and outgoing network traffic. And within a device, specific processes or services are identified by ports, which when combined with an IP address, create a unique identifier for a network service. Some ports are reserved for specific protocols, like 80 for HTTP or 22 for SSH. So here is a simplified diagram that represents the different layers of Internet Protocol Suite, from the application layer down to the physical hardware. Application layer is where application-specific protocols like HTTP operate, data is formatted according to these protocols and sent to the transport layer. 
ports are used to direct data to the correct application. And DNS also falls under the application layer as it is a network service that translates human readable domain names into IP addresses. Transport layer includes TCP and UDP. TCP provides reliable ordered delivery of data, while UDP provides faster but unreliable delivery. IP operates in internet layer, routing packets across networks. IP addresses are used to identify devices on the network. And inside internet layer we have IP addresses like IPv4 and IPv6 which are unique identifiers of devices. And they can also be public or private and static and dynamic IP addresses. Next we have the link layer which is responsible for the physical network connections using MAC addresses to identify devices on the local network and switches to direct traffic. And lastly we have physical hardware layer which includes the physical devices like computers, routers, firewalls and local area networks. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more topics like this.